Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. We neglect wisdom so much. We neglect wisdom so much. And then we run around chasing for the things that only wisdom can give. We waste our time in things that are minors. Things that will come to us naturally if we invest in wisdom. One more time pray and say, Lord, I choose wisdom. I use my mouth and I use my life. I am tired of foolish decisions. I'm tired of the level that I am and from the depths of my heart, I covet the wisdom of the spirit. Not human wisdom, not intellectual wisdom that comes to naught. I crave, I cry, I express desperation for that wisdom that made kings out of ordinary men. That wisdom that made champions out of shepherds. That wisdom that made warriors out of weak women. I covet your wisdom. I covet your wisdom. It is life to me. I covet your wisdom. I express it as a matter of life and death. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice not by strength by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor they that seek me early find me hallelujah Lord, as a family of faith, we submit our desperation before you. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. Distinguish us through wisdom, O oh God. We need wisdom. We crave for it. Thank you for the things that you have done in us and through us at this level. But, O oh God, we cry for wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant us wisdom tonight. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please greet one another. Hallelujah. Again, we'll never cease to honor and appreciate great men and women of God in this place. Please let's celebrate Prof. Thank you, sir, for taking out the time. Celebrate Pastor Williams in a long time. Hallelujah. Please celebrate Shadi's husband, Mr. Ojele. His wonderful wife. Thank you, sir. And Pastor Pete Rock's wife is here, my friend and brother. Celebrate him and celebrate her. You will be somebody's wife, ladies. Celebrate her. Thank you. Hallelujah. Everybody say wisdom is the principal thing. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. That means when you get wisdom, it will make you a principality. 
Oh, I love the wisdom of God. See, brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Look up. Look up. If you pay the price, you see, wisdom is so powerful. You don't need to give somebody to keep it for you and then you collect it. It's not subject to the wickedness of another person. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. Huh? You don't need to save it in a bank. It has equal value in every nation. Hallelujah. You don't need to keep it in a safe and then be afraid if a thief will come and pick it. When you have it, you have gotten it. It's as simple as that. There are things, see, the apostle said, such as I have. A man can know that he has something. It's not guesswork. You can know that you have something. Hallelujah. And I have come to cherish the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God will make you do things that will cause men to wonder. They said, what wisdom is this? May that be someone's testimony. That a generation will look at you and say, what wisdom is this? I cannot believe that with the kind of background you had or with the kind of past you had, you are still surpassing standards. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Tonight, please, even if you've never paid attention in anything that I've been teaching, this is one of the nights where I believe God will alter someone's destiny radically. Hallelujah. Radically. What you do not know can destroy you. Are you listening to me? What you do not know, brothers and sisters, in this realm, ignorance is not an excuse. What you do not know can destroy you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Help us. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to thee, O we rejoice we rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us oh we Lord, you are in the midst of your people and we salute your excellency. You have come to make us like you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are taking on the subject of extraordinary success tonight. The Lord put this so strong in my heart. I'm so excited because this is one of those days that you will walk out of this place rejoicing, knowing that your life has become predictable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm like a bee. My life is a product of many, many anointings. I have glean from the wisdom of many men. 
My father called me some years ago and he said, you're a young man with gray hair. Wisdom can add to your status in life. Wisdom can make a boy called Joash at age eight to become the king of an entire nation. Wisdom can make a feeble person called David to defeat a roaring enemy called Goliath. I cherish the wisdom of God. I cherish the wisdom of the Spirit. Sometimes when I sit down, I just begin to weep and I salute the Spirit of God for the ministry of all the men and the women of God who have poured in and invested in my life. Some of them may never know the impact that they have made in my life. But I am so grateful. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit in your work on earth is done. The Holy Spirit has moved through great and mighty men and women and has opened them to different dimensions of grace in the kingdom and we remain indebted hallelujah this teaching tonight is very dear to my heart and I hope that we will receive it and may it change us in the name of Jesus the first thing I want to talk about tonight is just to challenge us on our responsibilities as far as success is concerned. The topic is extraordinary success. As far as being successful in life is concerned, please listen to me. You have a role to play. Everyone say, I have a role to play. When it comes to the success equation, I want you to know that God has a part to play. But you also have a part to play. Please get this. It is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. We have two extremes in the body of Christ when it comes to the issue of success. There are others who believe success is purely based on intellectualism and hard work and all of that and they neglect the place of God to their detriment and they find out that they never become successful and then there are others especially those who are spiritual and they love God and they believe that because they are spiritual and they love God and they experience his presence success should just occur automatically both people are in error there is an imbalance are you getting my point when it comes to the kingdom you have a role to play and god has a role to play it is your playing of your role and god playing his role that makes your success extraordinary that makes your success guaranteed praise the lord it's important for you to know this I always say this when I'm teaching on success that it is dangerous and oftentimes destructive to try to share truth with people when they do not see the need to receive it. Are you getting my point? It is very dangerous. Listen, let me tell you something. When God started out with me, I was so excited at the depths of truth and insight that God was giving me. And I made a big mistake. And I don't want you to make that mistake. 
and the mistake that i made was that i assumed everybody had my kind of passion are you getting my point so every revelation god shared with me i was just looking for just every and anybody to share it with and i saw the way that certain revelations came to me as precious pearls and i carried it and gave people and they dropped it on the floor and matched it they trivialized the depth of the dealings with the spirit never waste your time trying to give information to people who have not seen the need to receive it please get this god is giving us wisdom tonight hallelujah that's why the bible says they that seek me will find me you must communicate your desire and your desperation for god it says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart is a law in the spirit never waste your time trying to invest your time your energy your resources in people who have not communicated a desire to receive it and don't feel guilty about it there are many parents who spend money trying to pay the school fees of people who are just not interested have you seen people like that you pay money for lesson and you come and find the person just gisting around or playing computer games do not waste your time and your resources on people make sure you probe the sincerity of their willingness to receive is someone learning something this night i used to feel so guilty because i felt if god gives you something you should lavishly give it and you know i became an enemy to many people because i was forcing them to try to get these principles and i just found out that some people are just not interested are you getting my point so learn it tonight treasure the informations that you receive from the spirit treasure your sacrifices don't trivialize your sacrifices you may pick up this message right now as a gift and give someone and the person tells you please i'm busy i'm expecting a call somewhere he's expecting a call that will lead him to make a foolish decision whereas there is wisdom that will save him are, are you getting what i'm saying you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything very important you have a role to play and god has a part to play that's what many of our fathers of faith call covenant i like to use the word partnership for it that it takes you please never forget this never forget this your success is not all up to god and it's not all up to you you have a part to play and god has a part to play and as far as god is concerned he is more than faithful you can trust him to play his part that means the, the, the problem in the equation of success is not trying to coerce God to play his own part. It's to make sure that we understand what our roles and responsibilities are. Are you getting my point? I promised that I was going to touch on something two weeks ago. Let me just touch on it very briefly. The gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. There is a difference. They are both gospels. But I need you to understand something. The gospel of salvation is the gospel that reveals to you the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. It lets you know that Christ came and he paid with his blood as an atonement for your sins. And that if by faith you accept the free gift, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood, his death and his resurrection, that if by faith you open up your heart at once eternal life becomes yours as a gift are you getting my point now 
so under the gospel of salvation you do not do anything any man that tries to tell you that you do things in order to inherit salvation or to receive eternal life that's not true the bible says we are saved by grace and that not of works hallelujah lest any man should boast but then the problem is many people camp around the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is only an entrance it should open you up to other realities in the kingdom are you getting my point now and then you come into the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom reveals jesus as king not savior again and it reveals you not just as a child but as an ambassador it is the gospel of the kingdom that opens you up not just to your rights and privileges but to your responsibilities hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom helps you to understand that god did not just save you to sit down moving around and every time there's trouble you just say jesus you died for me i belong to you if you like don't save me and then we don't do anything so we throw all of the responsibility to jesus christ and we just say just sit down and enjoy yourself and let life work for you unfortunately that's not true it sounds so true brothers and sisters it sounds so spiritual but it's not the truth it's not an accurate interpretation of the thoughts of god there is the gospel of the kingdom and in the gospel of the kingdom god finds a man god empowers that man and god begins to reveal to that man that he god has a need that we were saved unto good works we were not saved by works but we were saved unto good works not unto laziness so you understand that there is a responsibility in the kingdom hallelujah it's very important for us to understand this when it comes to success it depends on you hallelujah so let's look at the concept of success very quickly um, by the way let me celebrate two people um, you have the photos media hallelujah I must appreciate these two great men of God they have shaped and molded my life I salute and I honor them in their absence or in their presence I'm not embarrassed they have mentored and built me they have imparted wisdom I cried for wisdom they are true apostles of wisdom lots of people make noise but see wisdom has fruits are you getting my point anyone can claim to be wise but there are fruits of wisdom and I honor these great servants of God the first of them is Bishop David Oyedeko I honor him in my life I salute him as an apostle of wisdom <laughs> hallelujah I honor him and I appreciate God for the depth of wisdom and the depth of insight different people say all kinds of nonsense wherever I sit down and I hear you say anything wrong against him I will get up and walk out of there I don't care who you are and what you are saying I don't care what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are I salute these great men of God. Koinonia, help me. Let's celebrate grace. 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 Hallelujah. I also celebrate a true apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. Oh, what a mentor, what a mentor, what a mentor. I honor him in his absence. I honor him in his presence. I honor his grace. I honor him with my life. I honor the investment of the spirit upon his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down. God bless you. Let's get into the teaching very quickly. There is what you must know 
to take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Number one, let's examine the concept of success. What does it mean to be successful? I'll have to run. There is a lot to talk about tonight. What does it mean to be successful? Success means obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. Please write it. Very important. This is a school tonight. Success is obtaining or achieving or accomplishing a worthwhile goal. If you don't have anything to write, use the notepad on your phone. Please write something. Write something. This is a school. Hallelujah. Place value on knowledge. Place value on information. In heaven, when the apostle was in heaven, he said, write, write. Don't just hear, write. Because there is only so much your mind can take. Hallelujah. So what is success? Obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. One of the things that I've seen in my life and I've seen across different territories especially in the continent of africa and even in nigeria is that there are many sincere please listen many well-meaning christians who may remain failures for the rest of their lives please listen we're going to examine something very powerful tonight why is it that many christians are failures so many believers, so many tongue-talking Christians, prayer warriors, sincere Christians that have character, men who love God, very, very sincere people, honest, well-meaning believers, but they never get to accomplish or achieve anything they never get to transform a generation they never get to rise beyond the limitations that they found themselves in why is this so hallelujah and i got to understand something very important and very powerful jeremiah 9 verse 24 i was asking the lord this question and then one day the lord showed me a scripture that blew my mind and then i heard one of these men of God sharing this thing again, again and again. The first person I had talking about this was Dr. Mike Mudok. And then I had Olumide Emmanuel again talking about it. Please look up. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. But let him that glory had glory in this, that he what? Understand it and know it me. Hold on. Why will the Bible use? I hope you understand that. The, 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 the construction of scripture is very, very, very detailed and very intentional. It said, let him glory that he knows me and then that he understands me. Not just that he knows me alone. Not just that he understands me. And I said, ah, that's the point. There is a difference between knowing God and understanding God are you getting my point now the knowledge of God is what we call in koinonia intimacy you understand you you know his presence you can sense his presence you're seeing transformations happening in your life the anointing of the spirit of God is being felt strong upon your life that's as a result of the knowledge of God but when it comes to your success in life you must understand the ways of God the Bible says he showed his acts to the nation of Israel. But unto Moses he showed his ways. His principles. The inner workings that produce those results that are seen. So it's not enough to know God. You must understand the principles of the kingdom. And one of my obsessions is to open the body of Christ to understand the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mike Murdoch puts it this way. He says there are two dimensions to the knowledge of God. There is the person of Jesus Christ and there are the principles of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ secures you for eternity. 
the person of Jesus Christ secures your peace but the principles of Jesus Christ secure your success here and now are, are you getting the difference now very very profound and very important the principles of Jesus so all of the people who we consider to be successful and are not believers have embraced the principles of Jesus but they rejected his person they will never accept that these truths that they are working with that is producing this success has come from God they will never give him the glory they will never acknowledge him as the Lord of their life but they they change the names of these principles but you know that these are kingdom principles at work but then we have on the other hand the church we love God we know everything about God we know all the names of God from Genesis to Revelation but we have rejected the principles of Jesus so we have pastors we have leaders we have all kinds of people who never get to make any kingdom impact in their lifetime but tonight God is separating us through wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ There are laws and principles that must be understood and obeyed in order to be successful in this kingdom. Please write it down. There are laws and principles that must first be understood and then obeyed in order for you to achieve true success. Has nothing to do with age. Has nothing to do with gender. Hallelujah. It's not about age. It's not about your advantage or your disadvantage. Jesus was born in Nazareth. And apparently the Nazarenes had a testimony that they were failures. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But the best gift came out of Nazareth. Are you following me now? So when it comes to success, please and please, deliver yourself from this lock mentality a lot of people just believe we have been taught by well-meaning pastors well-meaning preachers that whoever god wants to bless he will bless whoever god does not want to bless have you heard that please be delivered this night in the name of jesus christ it's impossible listen when you understand the laws of the kingdom you will know why god is love and you will know why God is just. Righteousness and justice, the Bible says, are the foundations of his throne. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The ultimate equation for kingdom success. Many of us read it, we just recite it. But there is a powerful revelation. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. There are laws... There are principles that must be understood and must be obeyed in order to be successful. Listen, let me tell you something. Please look up. There are many people who hear what I'm saying right now and just make up their mind and say, no, forget it, it's just nonsense. We have seen people who don't know anything and God just blessed them. Have you heard preachers like that? I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting down and a blessing. What is your concept of a blessing? We are talking about socks. I mean sustained success that can be imparted to generations. And I'm not talking of money or finance necessarily. Hallelujah. Doing big things for the kingdom. Accomplishing much for his majesty. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book that contains laws. The laws of the kingdom. Many times when we hear law, we are just thinking law of old testament no 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 the laws of the kingdom were there before genesis 1 are you getting my point the laws of the kingdom are not the laws of the old testament no they have been there from the foundations of the earth they are the very principles that heaven is governed by shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that means do it consistently that thou mayest observe to what it's not enough to confess it's not enough to meditate there is a doing 
according to how many all not 90 percent the equation of success is so strict that 90 percent is still f for then after you have done this not during not before please help me read that last that that last uh, the, the the last clause there for then are you ready one to read for then thou shalt make and thou shalt have who will make his way he said you will make your way prosperous that means it is your responsibility if you want to remain at the level you are now are you getting my point now we keep blaming god on things that god has no business one of the things that i have learned in my life is the ability to accept responsibility it's so easy to blame our parents for the way we are right now right many young people we stand and have the gods and the effrontery to insult them and we say our parents they were careless they were this but look at how old you are now you've even forgotten that you are now 35 years doing the exact same thing you were complaining right from when you were 18 and you are still making you are making worse decisions because you are exposed to more opportunities and information many of us like to talk about the government you know people say the money in nigeria how can one person loot 170 million they would have shared it to all of us can i tell you something look up share the money in nigeria equally to everybody i give you 24 hours it will return back to the people that had it initially guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed for then shall thou make your ways what prosperous and you will have good success may god give us good success there is a difference between good success and bad success good success is the kind of success that exalts the name of christ keeps you in integrity and you can when you kill a man to be rich that's bad success are you getting what i'm saying when you sleep around for money that's bad success when you give bribes and tips in your office for promotion that's bad success the success of many people in nigeria has a cost upon it because it is bad success hallelujah let's continue very very important i want us to examine certain things very very quickly um Let's look at Jeremiah 6 verse 16. One other thing I want you to realize about success is that success is not coincidence. Success is not magic. Success is not luck. There's no such thing as that. A man said, if you wake up and find yourself successful, be sure you were not sleeping. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see and do what ask everybody say ask everybody say inquire everybody say pursue ask for the what that means those parts are already there you don't need to invent it you don't need to discover a road i mean to try to invent a road that has been found he said ask for the ancient part where is the good way it's only the good way that can give you good success is that true and he said and walk therein you can ask and they can show you and you can sit down and still be looking he said when you find it walk therein what's the result he said you shall find rest for your souls but what is the church saying but they said we will not walk is that not the testimony of many people we will not walk one day god will bless us god is see me praying you wait and see and we keep waiting and waiting and waiting hallelujah i come from a lineage of missionaries my grandfather they were the founding fathers and the trustees of the church of christ in nigeria 
you go to the history and you are checking you will see my mother when they were all small sitting there in the picture and my father too that my, my grandfather hallelujah my blood father was a baptist served god diligently with his life brothers and sisters if if there is any couple that i've seen in my life who are men of character and integrity that truly love god i can tell you my parents it, but it did not change the situation in my family are you getting what i'm saying I knew times when my mother would lock the door, you would hear her shouting and crying and praying. And at a point I said, Kai God, but you self now. Wow. Ah, somebody is crying like this to you. What you do not know can destroy you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with us a few principles. Before I go there, let me just say something quickly. The difference between failure and success is the voice that you have chosen to trust. I must say this before we continue. The difference between your success in life or your failure is the voice that you have chosen to trust. It's not enough to just listen. The Bible said, be careful how you hear. You can hear a wrong voice and believe that voice for years to your detriment. The difference, I can never help you to become successful until I change the wrong voice you are listening to. Adam and Eve kept hearing the voice of God. And as long as they had the voice of God and walked in his ways, they were successful. The day they had what? Another voice. Is that true? Lucifer came with another voice and he misled them. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, it said, And they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Hallelujah. And Adam, uh, that's three of, chapter 3 or 4. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. What did God say? Who told you? That means you started hearing another voice. Your success in life, listen please is highly dependent on the voice you have chosen to trust not just here our decisions in life are based on the convictions that words have brought for us if i convince you right now that if you come and kneel down on this altar you will get breakthrough will you be embarrassed doing it you will just come and kneel down is that not true if i convince you right now that if you slap lawrence your breakthrough will come guaranteed. As stupid as it sounds, you will find out that there are people who will come. Passionately, they say, oh, Lawrence, it's not like I'm a wicked person, but I need to. The whole body of Christ is moving at the frequency of convictions and words. And the Bible says, there is, as it were, many voices, and none of these voices are without effect that means the voice you permit to speak to you is the voice that molds your success unfortunately many of us in the body of christ have received not necessarily wrong voices but inaccurate voices not necessarily wrong but that the equations they have given us were not complete so we grew up with convictions that are not thorough not potent enough to deliver unto us the things that are required and that's why god is helping someone tonight i can never change your life until you are willing to change the voice the convictions that you have trusted and kept hmm. hallelujah i'm going to teach on three basic principles number one very important i'm not going to talk too deep in it number one if you want to be successful please listen we're going to talk about the principle of mentorship listen this has become such a controversial issue i have a series just for this and i trust that when god grants grace we're going to deal with it it's, it's been such a controversial issue in the body of christ there have been all kinds of imbalances about the concept of mentorship 
many people in their innocence have been misled into all kinds of junks have been threatened by all kinds of wrong ideologies but let me tell you a few things about mentorship very important first samuel 3 verse 12 to 13 please help us media we need to be very fast mentorship is a very important aspect of our lives there are two ways to learn in life number one mistakes number two mentors there are two ways to learn in life you learn through your mistakes or you learn through your mentors hallelujah mentorship is very very important please pay attention to what i'm sharing tonight if you ever are interested in success in the kingdom 3 verse 12 and 13 3 verse 12 and 13 first samuel 3 verse 12 and 13 thank you holy spirit is somebody getting blessed tonight hallelujah all right let's read together one to read and in that day i will perform against eli all things which i have spoken concerning his house when i begin i will also make an end verse 13 why he said for i have told him that i will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and he restrained them not there are two ways to learn in life mistakes and the ministry of mentors is so so important second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 very powerful scripture please if you listen to what i'm sharing just three laws that i share tonight it will dramatically change your life second timothy 2 verse 2 everyone please read one to read of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what teach others also so what i had i commit to faithful men and those faithful men teach and commit others this is how the chain of success works in the kingdom a mentor is not just one you submit to and admire that's what a lot of people do in the body of christ and they call mentorship so wrong a mentor is not just one that you submit to it's not just one that you admire a mentor is not just a man who instructs you a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey not whose instructions you hear not whose instructions you discuss not whose instructions you pray about are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of christ all in the name of mentorship and many people never get blessed you do not see the signature of what they attempt to be representing hallelujah a mentor is not just a person you submit to it's not just a person you admire oh i admire this person and that means the person is your mentor impossible a mentor is not even the person you sit under it's not just the person you hear a mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of god in your life this is very very dangerous if you understand it you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition A mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey. A mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss. Please get this. Get this. Get this. This is a powerful um, principle about mentorship. A mentor is not one who talks to you and you say, okay, I've had you. Let me go and pray about it. You've had people say all those kinds of junks. They say, I need to go and pray and confirm. 
you do not trust his voice there is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it it's impossible from genesis to revelation you read it is someone getting blessed tonight very important let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us oh thank you jesus someone is getting blessed in this place in the name of jesus christ a mentor is a shortcut to your future mentorship is shortcut to your future experience is the slowest way to learn experience is the slowest way to learn in life if you think everything you are going to get in life there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man you don't have any man's books you are reading there are no tips i share the holy spirit for myself experience is the slowest way to achieve it's like going to lagos by trekking you will arrive but you may arrive dead hallelujah a mentor is your coach he tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong a mentor is not your friend a mentor is not your confidant you see where a lot of people miss it please you neglect this principle i'm sharing just know that you have signed an agreement with failure guaranteed a mentor is not your best friend your best friend loves you the way you are hallelujah but a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are this is the difference between a mentor and your best friend your best friend loves you you will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say it's all right all things work together for them that love god who are the called because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport so they will forbear a lot of things they will overlook a lot of things so your friend you can be in a room with your friend and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear the day you leave your friend and go to another place that's where you see the gravity of your blunders because your friend has is somebody understanding what i'm saying there are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay i like this lady and she does something wrong and i want to correct her. i say ah let me correct this lady now and let this thing backfire and say okay no problem god you are that's not mentorship brothers and sisters that's called friendship are you getting my point a man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you a man who your success does not come as a big deal to him are you getting my point now help us holy spirit is someone getting blessed listen let me tell you something wisdom does not necessarily come with age you must understand this a mentor is somebody who can correct you i want to say something that will bless you right now correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working your superior is god's protection to you from your next tragedy are you getting my point when when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you it is god using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make he said my son pay attention don't just hear there is a difference between hearing and listening hearing is just sound listening is hearing with the intention of obedience that's the difference between listening and hearing there are many people who hear all kinds of things i have been more blessed 
from the men of God and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries. They are there working. They keep hearing, but they never listen. Is God challenging someone tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Mentorship is impartation. Mentorship is impartation. A man imparts his grace, his wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. You are learning through someone else's pain. He already made blunders that you are about to make and he can save you decades of failure and recovery if only you will listen please make sure you are writing in one hour brothers and sisters look at me in one hour i can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again are you getting my point in one hour i can for paying 500 naira pastor i can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years when i read rediscovering the kingdom years ago the book just came out i made sure that i ordered it i wrote a letter to mike Mo uh, miles munro and i told him i've been blessed by your ministry may god bless and honor you and he replied me he said may god bless you use the book i got that book i paid so much when it came into the country, I made sure I was one of the first people that got it. And I sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the spirit. But within one day, you can get wisdom from the pain of a man. Is somebody getting blessed? Do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself? Your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right. Is someone getting blessed in this place? Thank you, Jesus Christ. A mentor is one who knows already what you need to know. A mentor is one that already knows what you need to know. Not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important. As far as the kingdom is concerned very very important listen I want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life there is an attitude hallelujah this is where a lot of people are missing it please listen I wrote it down here and let me just read it I said to be blessed from a mentor's life you must receive the person of that man of God not just the message the person I see a lot of people who say forget about the person just receive the message and leave him that's junk and nonsense are you getting my point you must first receive the person of that man of God I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders they sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces and then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them it never works that way you cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man the law does not work that way the first requirement is that you must receive the person you must be able to trust the voice of god mentors are not perfect people 
there are people who have knowledge there are people who have experience there are people who have grace if you are not if you if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations i'll never forget one time i went somewhere and some people were discussing about benihin shortly when the divorce happened is someone getting blessed tonight they were talking about benihin and i had the people just shouting and they were saying i'm disappointed in benihin imagine how can a great man and i just kept quiet i was listening to them we were watching a program and they were just talking tearing this man down said this generation self now what is happening you don't even trust anybody again and i listened to them and later on i called the person i said how could you be this unwise hallelujah over an information you do not even understand you are not benny hins pa you don't know anything it's easy to sit down and discuss about people isn't it it's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's World Cup. Let me use that example. And say, ah, Nigeria, you didn't score. Shame on you. That heading, if you just had it, is easy. Talk is cheap. Until you get to that place, you will see how easy or how difficult it is. It's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say, Kai, I don't like this. These guys are so boring. This blah, blah, blah. This pastor's wife is not even very, very anointed. Why is she quoting this and that? until the day you have the opportunity you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month and that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play you will fish you will copy the teaching of every man of god till your congregation can even tell you the message and you will find out that it's just it's just february then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week that you stand on your stage and say ah but is that scripture correct it's easy to stand and judge it the said never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once and i listened to them and i called the person i said no don't do this if you talk like this you will never receive the grace upon his life and i told him you need to go to god and say lord i am sorry hallelujah you must receive the person of that man of god number two you must trust his voice you must trust that his voice represents the voice of god in your life please listen to this i'm not teaching you error nobody obeyed instructions from a man of god in scripture and went to perdition if he's a true man of god You must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from God. Listen, you never get a mentor give you instructions and you say, I've had you, sir. Let me go and think about it. That's nonsense. Read your scriptures. If you trust that the voice of this man of God is the voice of God, you prove it by absolute loyalty. This looks very childish, but I will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of god we just sat down listening to him and when when i saw that man i kept quiet for hours this man was talking some of my colleagues were just making noise and i kept quiet i was listening to this man and he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball and at a point he said what kind of person are you don't you talk and i kept quiet I was just listening listening and later on he cornered me outside and he said i know what i've seen in the spirit about you pray for me i said i'll pray in my room not here he said lay hands on me i said no i won't do that many foolish young preachers say yes sir you are celebrating my me kneel down let me show you what anointing can do see that no this is why many people do not let me tell you success is not about business or job if you do it it accounts for less than 10 percent of the equation of success if you neglect these laws you neglect it to your detriment praise the lord is someone listening 
it is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man then his message his grace and his anointing will be effective in your life it's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting listen to their men of god and immediately they come out they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit and say man oh boy that thing this man is saying this is nonsense i remember one man who was criticizing mike Murdock, and he was even warning me he said be careful this seed seed man everything is seed every what sort of man is that you will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life i said that's all you saw about this man that's everything you saw about this man I said time will tell years later i saw him in the midst of financial crisis he was reading one of my Bulldog's book why people do not receive their financial harvest see let me tell you something about life <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance it's only a matter of time there are realities that is like a wall you will box it till you get tired at that point hallelujah bible says that david cried and cried until he had no strength he came to himself thank you jesus christ mentorship creates seven things and let me just put it like i said we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry number one it creates impartation Number two, it creates guidance. Number three, it creates access. It creates impartation. It creates guidance. It creates access. Number four, it creates endorsement. Number five, it creates promotion or a platform for promotion. Number six, mentorship creates a platform for wisdom. Seven, mentorship creates speed in your life. Take note of this. It was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I would mention their names. And with my zeal, I would just be talking and the woman called me one day and said, my son, you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go god is going to use you greatly never criticize a man of god you are too young to know everything around a man of god's life make sure from today and i said mommy god is my witness and in your presence this is the last time i will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of god mentioning his name i would challenge wrong doctrines but not to talk about a man of god wisdom i would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what god will be doing in koinonia one day now i will make a foolish decision maybe on air are you seeing that now this is how great people i'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship there are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing there are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing levels of wisdom hallelujah i learned silence from one of our boards of trustees i notice every time you are talking to that man he will keep quiet you will talk and say all kinds of things and you will keep quiet. I didn't used to be like that. Especially if God has revealed to me what, what your problem is. Before you talk, I say, please save, save us the time. And he taught me the art of listening. That it is wisdom to listen to a man. See that? Thank you, Jesus Christ. You don't decide or choose your mentor. Let me shock you now. <laughs> mm. Mentorship, just like your assignment, is discovered. You discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life. We have a series on that and I will teach you. You don't sit down and choose your mentor because you will never choose a man who will flog you. Are you getting my point? 
you are smart enough mentorship is like your assignment why will i choose a man who when people are celebrating me and saying apostle joshua selman you look at me and say young man no problem but there is more work to be done keep that all of those accolades and let's work do you think i naturally will like that kind of person mentorship is like assignment you don't choose that's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them he said oh boy i am seeing that you like women say, ah, what sort of embarrassment is this and he moves from the name you used to call him maybe man of god or daddy or papa he says sir please ah i don't like women. what kind of thing is this i am a prophet or i am an apostle you're an apostle i'm an apostle <laughs> hallelujah how can you tell me i like women me and you don't even see me around he says i'm telling you you like women go and work on it say no i don't like this guy let me go to this other one he said you are okay just believe push yourself and then the day something backfires truly you find yourself sleeping around you will now get up and say goodness and this man saw it i told one of my friends something years ago immediately i looked at him I said you have a lot of tendencies and i want you to work at it at that point he even got offended that day but after like four or five years he called me one day he said can you remember something that you told me he said honestly i am embarrassed to even believe that i'm a victim of this i told him no there's no point for embarrassment once you acknowledge something change look let me tell you let me tell you mentorship is so powerful somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal he can see all the tendencies oh i'm a millionaire let money come oh kingdom you will see what will happen and the person says make sure you take out time to start praying because i see money destroying you this is not word of knowledge this is this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience it's amazing how people come for counseling pastor they come on monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come they sit down good afternoon sir i want to seek your advice and for 30 minutes they are just running their mouth and talking and i'm keeping quiet listening to them and after 30 minutes they say i feel very relieved and i say let's pray <laughs> let's pray They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden. If I stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and I'm feeding you spiritually if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic how can you trust that I'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity how can you trust that I'm not going to get anointing from somewhere are you getting the point now so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming God whereas there are irrefutable principles no man outgrows the need to be guided in his life no man at whatever level no man you discover your mentors and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives mentors are not necessarily perfect people please is someone getting blessed tonight mentors are not necessarily perfect people they are people who have come who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of god in their mouth now look at me there is an attitude that you must have every time you are before a great man please listen this is not human worship when you sit before a mentor or before a great man only ask questions and listen when you sit before a great man that's not time for discussion 
a lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see and they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense they are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking or we are colleagues in this you sit down with a woman who has trained eight children and you are a young lady getting married two weeks you are already talking to her about pregnancy say this and that and that i read it in this book this woman gave birth to eight children out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you are going through. or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication two months three months into the pregnancy and you now look at her and say mommy is there any way you can help me eight children eight children and you believe is such a level of arrogance Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I, some, I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me. I will never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking, immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. You know, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something, I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more. I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? Just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining. They are shouting. They won't let you talk. They say, you cannot imagine. Where will my school fees come from? Hey, hey, hey. And they are closing next tomorrow or whatever. And you are saying, calm down. Say, where will, do you know what it means to raise 20,000? Calm down. Whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees. Just calm down. It's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you. I 
I cannot tell you how many how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling and you can see that these things have prolonged for years and as soon as they enter I just start smiling because I know in less than five minutes this will be over whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever hallelujah help us Holy Spirit there is always a price to pay please listen there is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor there is always a price it will cost you to follow a true mentor adaptation is the key to enjoy the ministry of a mentor in your life look at me never expect a mentor to adjust to your life you are joking if you cannot adjust to the person's life I'll never forget when I went to Abuja one time to see a particular man of God. Four days. I had not seen him. Four days. And God was my witness that I never complained. I said, Lord, thank you. It's a, it's a privilege. These are people too wait for counseling to see me. And they are not complaining. So I have no rights to complain. There are people who call me, hello, hello, this and that and that. And I tell them, okay, we have a counselor. They say, please, I don't have that time. I can't wait. I'm busy. Ah, you are coming to see lecturers, professors, great men. And a young man just comes with his sad jeans. Is there any way we can just see sharp, sharp? Please, I have things to do. Pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there. There is a price. Never forget this. There is a price to pay for mentorship. There is a price. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was talking and he said something. He said that um, every time he called um, um, Papa Ayo or Richard Jaffa, you know, he would call him and then he would say, Johnson, how are you? And that's how he would leave the phone there. He would be doing something. Johnson Suleiman said, that's how you wait. You can't complain. You can't argue. You can't off the phone. That's how you wait. And later on, he said, just a minute, I'm coming back. And you will continue doing something else. Some of you would have been offended and angry. And say, do you not know I'm an apostle too? And then as a while, you say, okay, what is it? A mentor is not one who calls you apostle Joshua Selman. He should be able to say, Joshua, come. You see that? Sometimes we are used to the accolades of men. I am apostle. Even if you say pastor, they say, am I pastor? Is A the same thing as P? I'm not, I mean, you better call the correct thing. May God help us. Because if you get this principle alone, many of us tonight, this is the key to the next level of your life. You have neglected the ministry of great men. There is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Pursuit is the only proof of passion. There are people who get angry. Maybe they want to see me. And maybe we are away on a trip. And then they are angry. And they call. They say, I've been calling you for two days. And I say, I'm sorry. What's the issue? They say, please, I've been trusting God for something in my life. And you just finished quarreling me. You have been calling me for two days. I'm not responding. Whereas maybe I was preaching. Whereas maybe I was having time with God. You know, please and please, brothers and sisters, it takes humility to rise to the top. If you are not ready to be humble, get set to remain at that level. Hallelujah. I shared with you my story on how I was already preparing to go to the U.S. to go and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter before they died. I was going for a conference but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet and I ins I made up my mind that when I got there I would insist I'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet for two solid weeks scrubbing the toilet every day there are two ways to receive from a man of God your seed and your service your seed and your service you can serve your way into an anointing. You can sow your way into an anointing. 
avoid familiarity i beg you koinonia listen to me let my conscience be clear before god that i taught you this avoid familiarity there are people in my life are that the prof is here and the way the way that that prof respects me so much it even makes me embarrassed i never 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 will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted never ever hallelujah many of you do not understand the secret listen please listen this is where you may be missing a lot of things you can be with a man of god for a long time never forget who you are talking to it's not enough to talk to people never forget who jesus looked at them and said before your father abraham was i am and they said ah, what are you saying never forget who you are talking to this is not human worship is the law these are the ancient parts that made people great i never get familiar there are all kinds of men of god something something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation one of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries i won't call their name just to honor the person he had been trying to reach me and he had called and called and called and called and somehow the call could not get through and you know he looked at his status and he was offended he is really an honorable person you see i mean the direct like pa of one of the great men of god in the country and he's been trying to reach me and for whatever reason when he got to our protocol department we were in we were in in, in a meeting in um, in Quara State and so we could not attend to him and then eventually he got offended and then when he called you know he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant but when he told me who he was I would have said oh God you have told me who you are let me tell you who I am too I just told him I said I'm sorry sir I really apologize I am sorry we do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working we apologize on behalf of myself on behalf of the ministry immediately the man too said i'm sorry it's not like i just meant to talk like that it's just that you know this and that and that and that never be embarrassed to honor greatness when a great man rebukes you shut up whether he's right or wrong keep quiet don't get up and say i'm justifying myself what is all this human worship after all it is god continue and see how far it will take you when an elderly person rebukes me when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me all i say is thank you sir i'm grateful for the opportunity you see many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place and so you just believe that every time we're just standing boss 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 oh i wish it were so i wish it were so i wish it were so praise the lord number two principle number two let's hurry up goodness time is gone the law of value i'm talking about your assignments now you want to be successful please listen to me this will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment i want you to listen your assignment is called the law of value hebrews 10 verse 7 please hebrews 10 verse 7 God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I'd like us to read it. One, two, read. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is what? It has been written. Your assignment, I have come to execute that which has been written. Write a few points about your assignment. Number one, everything created on the earth solves a problem. We taught this to the school of ministry in the course called personal transformation. Everything created, not this exact words, but then something similar. Everything created on the earth solves a problem. 
that means everything created has a divine assignment everybody say i have a divine assignment whether you know it or not is irrelevant just say i have a divine assignment because after this teaching tonight in the name of the lord you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned there are so many people escorting others jacob had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death and he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them every man in the earth is a working solution to a problem everybody in the earth is a working solution to a problem say i am a working solution to a problem yes your existence proves that there was a problem and god sent you to solve it and brothers and sisters fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation many have died without solving that problem and god had to take their the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful the problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula it's a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under ac he's wearing suit he has a chef but you are still paying him five hundred thousand. the gate man is outside there's no ac in his small room but you are paying him ten thousand. you get angry and switch the people let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation let the gate man become the ceo give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make and then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks so the problem that you solve is what decides your significance god does not decide your significance It's god's desire for everybody he said you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood but you decide your significance there is no reason to envy any man there is no reason to be jealous every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems and the degree of the problems that you solve decides your significance there are so many men of god angry at at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it crowd does not mean anything a man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of god they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward i'm ministering the word right now i'm solving a problem it's a spiritual problem are you seeing that anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom there is a reward whether you sell it or you give it free this is the only reason why i am not charging you for listening is that true because the jehovah jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving whose problem are you solving are you seeing why the wealth of an arm robber is wrong because an arm robber points a gun he's not solving any problem but he wants to be rewarded prosperity is not a mystery brothers and sisters the problems you solve decide your significance when you solve a problem you create a divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve 
problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you jeremiah chapter 1 he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is your lifting is not in your similarity with others it is your difference your uniqueness there are many preachers in nigeria there are many preachers in zaria there are many preachers in kaduna what makes my ministry different what makes my ministry to the body of christ different what listen concentrate on your uniqueness not your similarity when it comes to purpose your uniqueness becomes your edge so if you are selling recharge card brother b is selling recharge card what is your difference what is that distinguishing factor that's what gives you an edge oh hallelujah i thank god for his wisdom how do you discover your assignment let's write it very quickly how do you discover your assignment number one what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve write it what you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it anger is the seed for change whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change i hate ignorance i hate the effect of poverty on people i hate it with a passion i hate ignorance of the principles of god i hate the fact that people do not recognize the lordship of christ and these things have constructed my passion they have built the framework of my teachings what agitates you take note of the pain and the things that annoy you write very quickly two things that really agitate you that every time you see it you cry and you wish for change there is an anointing there there is always an anointing in the place of pain pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing thank you jesus christ identify your highest point of anger identify your highest point of anger there is something that agitates you when you see people go through it when you see your family members go through it something in you cries that's the anointing of the spirit hallelujah when moses saw the egyptian suffering something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him are you getting my point now to an extent that he killed somebody Have you been ignoring your pain do you know that in your pain is the voice of the spirit god has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason there are many of us god has has anointed us to be saviors he has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom are you seeing what we have refused we have ignored please let me have your attention don't worry the holy spirit is just doing his thing God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody's wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. Your passions, your passion. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your passion, 
I remember when I was in secondary school, I would give everything. The little money that I'll have, I will share it and give everybody. They will buy me, buy, buy everything, and I will suffer like a fool. But it was a passion I could not help. There are many families who build houses and just keep it and say, when a man of God comes to town, let him come and stay. Have you seen people like that? There, is, there are passions. It's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I will study my passions and I take my passions as a voice, as the voice of God speaking over my destiny. What is the conversation that excites you? There are conversations that when you start in my presence, I'm going to sleep or send you away. I guarantee you. Even if you mention Jesus in the middle of the conversation. But there are things that excite me. Is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show, passionately, and you are sleeping and snoring? The interest is just not there. Whereas you put Benny in and I can be watching a crusade and I'm watching, I'm struggling with sleep. I'm nodding but I'm, I'm focused. And I say, what is this stress? Sleep. There is something. It's like fire in your bones. Have you been responding to your passions? When you find your assignment, you have found your reward system in life. When you find your assignment, brothers and sisters, you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity. And I mean what I'm saying. When you truly find your assignment, when the Spirit takes over your soul, when the Spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you your assignment must become your obsession. And let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue. Listen to me. There must be a theme that, that defines the entire scope of your life. Let me tell you what that means. Every time you mention Aura Roberts, what comes into your heart? Healing. Is that true? Benny Hinn, healing. Is that true? Billy Graham, evangelism. J.J. Okocha. Is that true? If I mention your name and nothing comes to my mind, your difference has not been refined enough. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you say Tiger Woods, golf, right? Tyra Banks, fashion people. See them all smiling. Praise God. If your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word, you do not know it. You can say my life's mission is, is to bring the rescue, the, the, the lost sheep, you know, from all the wilderness. Look, all of that long story, there must be a theme that you can live for and die for. hallelujah now i want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life everything that rises from god camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment Many of us do not know that God speaks through opportunities. God never told David to kill Goliath. He saw an opportunity. And he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity. And he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world. He got a wife for free. He got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity.
and I want to tell you something. God speaks again through favor. This is how you know that you have been called in an area. Never stay in an area where there is no favor. It's a sign that God is not there. Even in the prison, Joseph was still favored. That's a sign that God is with you. Please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor. There are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious. God has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you. Favor. Everybody say favor. God speaks to you through favor. Never stay in a place where there is no favor. The next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical. Please get this. You are not sent everywhere. Oh, the Lord may tell you in a vision, I'm sending you to the nations. That is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations. No single man will conquer the whole world. You are sent to a person or a group of people. You will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless. Stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere. God has not sent me to everybody. It is good for me to understand that God has sent me to a people. Anytime you get to a place where you have been sent, they will receive your anointing. There are many people struggling in regions that God has not sent them. They are trying to heal the sick. They are trying to do everything. Forcing healing ministries. Forcing evangel. They have run the whole ministry into debt. They are trying to organize crusades. There is no grace there. Never forget that your assignment has its geography. And Isaac sold in that land, not in any land. Abraham, come, I will take you to a place. That is where I will bless you. Brothers and sisters, after this program, use this weekend, especially for those who are trusting God for a place where you will stay. You must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography. It's a costly decision. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must flog it out. Go on a fast for one day or two days. If you can't fast, take fruits or something light and flog it out with destiny and say, oh God, I know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography. Let me tell you something. I come from Plateau State and the little years I've had serving God and ministry that state never opened up to me. They were never opened and prepared to receive of my grace. And it bothered me because I was blessing other people and blessing other states. And I said, Lord, what is it about this place? This is my own very place. Let me be a blessing to them. And God kept telling me again and again, they are not ready to receive your anointing. There is too much familiarity. And do you know what happened? The, the city of Joss opened up for me through my teachings. They never even knew I was the one. It was students from Futmina and Yola and all of that, including my neighbor. I mean, neighbors that we grew up together. They took my teaching, my own uncle, my own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying and then got to find out I was the one. And he cried and said, my own son is in ministry and is changing the world and I'm here dying. And so that, that familiarity, they received the teaching not knowing it was me. And then when they had now respected the anointing, then God opened up to them, it is this person. Are you getting the point now? That's the reason why, although many of you are anointed, you find out that every time you get home, you just feel ordinary. That presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born. You are the child everybody knows. Even if you tell them God is saying, they say, shut up. What do you know about God? But the day they are ready to receive your anointing, they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter. Your assignment is geographical. Thank you, Jesus Christ. 
Your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate. Listen, listen, please listen. Look up, look up before you write. Let me explain something to you. Um, come, Sam. How many of you agree and believe that Sam is a powerful worshiper? But do you know, as gifted as Sam can be, Sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated. How many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that God has honored you? There are graces, there are giftings, but you are in a territory where nobody can celebrate your grace. And God takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness, even you, you are shocked. You never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace. Has it happened to anybody? You keep singing and when you sing, they just tell you, go and sit down. And you get to a place where people say, sorry sir, are you living right now? Please, can you come and minister in our church? Which hotel are you saying? Say, they, they kept me in one car. They say, please come, 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 come. Make, make arrangement. Make, and you are saying goodness. Look, let me tell you. There are things that people do for me when I go for ministrations and I'm amazed. I'm almost saying, oh God, please let this thing not become human worship. And I'm, I'm shocked, honestly. When I'm in my hotel room, I'm now looking, I'm like, goodness. Ah! I will discover every other thing that is left that I've not discovered. <laughs> oh, when you are in the geography of your assignment, men will pay you in a way that will shock you. They will pay for any and everything to receive your grace. Stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated. There are many of you, you are, everybody tolerates you everywhere. There is a place where your grace can be celebrated. And I tell you, part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great. Sam, God bless you. When we went to Quara State, Sam ministered and he led worship. He was so powerful. When it was the time I don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of God. Goodness, that was the first time I saw Sam moving very powerfully in the anointing. I mean, it was time to minister to the worshippers and you could see the anointing and the grace. And these people were receiving. After the ministration, everybody, almost every, I think everybody except they were teasing Yerima. And they say it was only Yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person. He was just snapping. But everybody from protocol to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses <laughs> celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there I always celebrate them. They know it. I celebrate the workers. That's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them. To honor them. To bless them. And I use the opportunity to tell them I am grateful. It's easy for people to see what God is doing in this ministry and say it's Joshua Selman. It's not true. What you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me. Greater than me. Who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom and I'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor are you getting my point now that's why we provide free bus transport because we we respect the gift of God that is in you people and everyone here we never you never see me treat people based on who your father is I don't want to know whether your father is a minister whether you are married to to, the, to a relation of the president uh -uh. no we no man after the flesh when you come here we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible is someone learning something please let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you 
I see a lot of preachers struggling. I've seen a lot of men of God with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that I'm doing. I'm doing it with ease because there is grace there. I see a lot of people struggling, putting themselves under needless pressure. And I say, why? Why? I never try to do what I am not gifted, anointed, skilled, or trained for. I rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry. Now, let me advise you, especially if you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership. There's something I wrote that is very powerful. You don't give yourself to people. Listen, you give yourself to God and you give God to the people. You will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself. Give yourself to God and give God to the people. Many preachers are dying and killing themselves. They want to do everything for everybody. No, sir. No, sir. Give yourself to God and then give God to the people. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number three. This is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight i tell you you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success i don't care what the limitations are in the name of jesus christ as we talk about this just just pray can you just pray in one minute and say lord i love your laws i love your laws go ahead and pray just pray in one minute as i talk about this last law just few minutes our time is gone and then you will be blessed and will pray. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. hallelujah oh shibala katabaladaba somebody's life is about to change first timothy chapter 5 17 and 18 the last law we'll talk about is the law of honor the law of honor blessed be the name of the lord every time i teach on this something happens to someone's destiny the law of honor first timothy 5 17 and 18 look up everybody Let's read. One, two, read. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what? Double honor. Especially they that labor in word and in doctrine. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. First Peter 2 verse 17. And then I'll teach. This for me is one of the greatest laws of success. It may not be like that for you, but this for me Everybody read. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time now, one to go. Honor all men and honor the king. Honor all men and honor the king. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. But honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference. To honor a man 
means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness that's what it means to honor to honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness please look up honor in the school of success is the seed for access say it one more time everybody honor is the seed for access you will never access a place a grace an anointing a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor every grace you dishonor lives your life every grace you honor is multiplied in your life never forget this never forget this when the devil wants to drain you of grace he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you and you find out that nothing will be the bible says honor all men and then honor the king this is why we take our time to worship god we take our time to honor the king honor always creates favor let me tell you this if you've been looking for how to create favor in your life i'm telling you how it comes now favor honor always creates favor 100 percent of the time the favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor you dishonor men you will never experience favor listen listen look at me this is pastor, pastor pete rock's wife get this hallelujah pastor pete is my friend he's my brother in the ministry i love him so much he respects me so much and i honor him so much this is his wife are you getting my point if i treat his wife well i have communicated that honor she will speak well about me in the presence of her husband and in the presence of another is that true is that true so i am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor many young people do not honor their parents and you do not know why favor does not leave them to you there's all kinds of disrespect around the bible says honor your father and your mother let me tell you why many young people are struggling in nigeria i want to be very sincere with you the bible says honor your father and your mother it says so that your days will be long and it will go well with you are you seeing why it's not going well with many people i know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them call their mother prostitute call their father drunkard and it may be true what they are saying but let me tell you the truth you dishonor your parents you are in for failure failure that god will not stop except you cry for mercy and change is someone getting blessed never dishonor elders i don't care what level of grace you get to as i am like this if i see an elderly woman that i know carrying something maybe she went to grind and all of that i see mothers around they go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are they put it on their head they are going and immediately they are going you see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend or one guy she calls her boyfriend they don't even know what they are doing they are just bouncing and they are, mom see ya and they are going and the mother is carrying this this is dishonor the bible says if you don't honor your parents listen to what i'm telling you it says it will not be well with you as simple as that hallelujah oh i will say it i will say it there are many of us we have no respect at all for elderly people there are even people that beat their parents that one is not just that it will not be well with you you just brought a curse upon your life if you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person especially your parents whether they speak to you or not i am telling you scripturally the bible says a man that curses his father his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him 
That's what the Bible says. I will never, never rebuke an elder. These are laws. There are many graduates. They thought it's just getting degree. Now you have gotten the degree. Nothing is happening. They thought it's just oratory and all of that. No. They thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The law of honor. Honor creates favor. What is favor? Favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you. That's favor. When someone is willing to solve your problems for you. Whether financial problems, spiritual problems. When you honor men, you have access to their grace. Look, let me tell you. If a door has been closing again and again and again. Especially the door to the grace of a man of God. Check well, there is dishonor there. The entire Ten Commandments was all about honor. Honoring God and honoring men. God is so obsessed with honor. It's not enough to believe in a man of God. You must honor that man to ever get the grace. I taught this in commanding results. And it's all oh goodness. I cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people. Many of us do not honor grace. You allow familiarity. I'm not teaching human worship. Hallelujah. Learn to celebrate greatness when you see it. Please write this down. Learn to celebrate greatness. Never trivialize a man's accomplishments, especially if he's spectacular. You say, this woman is a director in... In, in this particular parastata. So what about it? Anybody can be a director. Why are you not a director? It's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things. And eh, she's behaving like this. Is it because she's a man of God's wife? What's the big deal about being a man of God's wife? That's why God didn't make you a man of God's wife. You see that? Celebrate greatness. I, I, I shared this and I'll say it again. I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay. I will fight with that man there or that woman. Man of God or no man of God. I will fight till I pay for it. But there are many of us. You come and sit down and you see elderly people standing and you just sit down. Say, I beg, forget. Oh, this is not the issue of anything. This is my right. You see a lot of people do that. And we laugh about it. And you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything, no job, no marriage, no nothing. And you do not know that this is the law we are violating. How many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say, I'm of a marriageable age right now. Please bless me. Release the anointing that made you get married upon my life. You are there complaining that the home is not going well. You, you thought you were playing. Now 35, 36 and counting. Learn this night. God is bringing deliverance for you. It's not everything that is about witches and wizards. We like passing responsibility to the devil. Take responsibility this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honor. There are many men of God. They, they have little ministries, 10 members, 12 members, and you hear the way they preach and lambast ministers. I had the other day, the other man talking, and do, they know nothing about organization. They know nothing about finance. They don't even have the money to be able to learn finances. They know nothing about organization. Yet they sit down in that little mindset, local champions, and begin to castigate and, and, and talk about everybody. See, stop it tonight. If you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success, repent tonight. Every time you see success, kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately. The lady is beautiful. Say it fast before the devil now tells you, 
this and that ah i appreciate you you're a lovely lady very pretty god bless you that's all you can never criticize what you have celebrated hallelujah sam is singing eh he's singing but what's the, what's the big deal jerry there's one other guy that sang it's really not about the other guy he's intimidated so he's using the other guy to turn down another person you you cannot sing anything now you are you are just looking and say well, this lady was she trying she's trying to show us that she can speak english once you find yourself criticizing people you are communicating a dissatisfaction it's natural with human beings manage it through the law of honor are you getting what i'm saying I celebrate men of God. I celebrate vessels of honor generously. Many of us are very embarrassed. Let me tell you a few things that you should never do. Look up, please. Never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say, This is not a new person. He's one of us. He's, he's one of our friends. I, you know, he's not a. He's a you know a lot of people do that they say this is one of us uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's is an elder uncle just because he cannot accept that he's a great man and we begin to use all kinds of english see that or if i want to introduce um pete rock's wife now she was a member of koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes <laughs> you know all all of that and then he came up and, and carried and all, and all of that but listen it has changed hallelujah i can keep looking at her and say this and that uh -uh. this is my friend's wife and she deserves my honor and i will honor her any day i will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her i don't care where she's going this is honor are you getting my point many of you do not know the law of honor I celebrate men in the secret and in the open. I've been following a conference. A conference right now. I had to follow Mike Murdoch's conference with David Ibiome. And I've been listening, Pastor, and eating the videos again and again. There's a conference going on in Koza. I cannot attend it. And I've been following it online. Paying the internet right now as I'm preaching. It's paining me, but I'm supposed to, <laughs> I'm supposed to have been following the conference. But I sure will remedy for it. Benihin came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. And I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found out it was miracle service. I said, ah, oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus. I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it. I honor you. Hallelujah never trivialize greatness no matter how little it is never trivialize greatness never trivialize greatness they invite you to go and preach and you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana you it, it never is just favor don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches uh -uh. celebrate the gift celebrate the grace do what god has called you to do God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Never come into the presence of greatness empty-handed. I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor. Please, look, I can, I can get down on my knees and beg you. If you want extraordinary success, never make it a culture. Do it delightsomely. Do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty-handed if you do not have a seed 
look for opportunities to serve are you getting what i'm saying i never see a man of god empty-handed no matter what happens and i'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seeds that was talked about in malachi chapter one that people can't no no you don't bless a great man with leftovers you bless a great man honorably i'm teaching you principles that make for great men i lift my hands in worship as i sing praises to your name father i lift my hands in worship as i sing glory to your name i never go to see my father or my mother empty-handed never 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 is is a taboo as far as i'm concerned never i never go to greet and see an elderly person if if even if i don't take a gift then it means I'm going to send something. But many of us, we do not understand that these are little principles. This is how the kingdom is built. You neglect it at your detriment. I'm rounding up. There are two ways I taught you to receive from a great man. One is service and the other is seed. If you don't have money, go and look for the man of God's clothes. Say, Sam, just early in the morning, just say, Sam, I came to your house. Where are your clothes? Sam will say, no. Say, kill me here. Bring it out. And you carry a bucket. And you are washing Hebrews 7.7. 7, and without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. You see a woman, you go to her house and say, Mommy, I came to wash your plates today. Say, no, no, my daughter, there are no plates. Carry the ones that are clean. Say, they are dusty. Soak them again. Lord this is how I will have my home this is how I will be blessed the law of honor you can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now hallelujah praise the Lord Jesus now let me say something because I know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening please listen to this never invite a man of god whether a music minister a worship minister for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him you see a lot of people do this in the body of christ let me correct it now hallelujah this is an apostolic ministry we speak to the body of christ and i'm speaking to the body of christ he must be corrected never invite a man of god that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift are you getting my point there are many people who want to bring every great man of god but they are not prepared if i am going to bring desmond as a professional decorator for instance i must have the ability to honor his grace if i cannot use what you have please is somebody getting blessed there are so many people i want to invite this i want to invite that there are so many men of god that have been pain because people just invite them come for a meeting and they never make adequate arrangement there are laws and principles in this ministry there are very few men of god who have invited here and i can tell you this with all humility when we invite a man of god we we prepare as if it's marriage because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us then we better not invite him are you getting my point when we invite a man of God right from the junction, the protocol department is waiting for him. When he gets there, they pick him. There are people who invite a man of God and it's when he comes, you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room. He says, sorry, how much is this room? Is it double or single, standard or this thing? And the man is, you have been planning for a meeting for a long time. Are you getting my point? Now Pastor Williams is just standing. And you are wondering, or a man of God that you invite, you say, has he come? He's outside, you just say, sorry, please stand up, stand up, keep these two seats. Sir, you are welcome. What are you doing? You are not intentional about the spirit of excellence. 
and now i know that many people have not been trained to recognize this but i want you to know you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor i have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that i was honored they honored me from my arrival to my departure and i found out that there was an unusual flow of grace i i went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor but there are meetings you go for you can't wait for the last session immediately it finishes you just you just everybody pack your load and let's leave this place never make your ministry like that there are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of god let me use the opportunity and say this number one his hospitality hospitality especially when you are it's okay if you are inviting a man of god that is within your region please say it because this has not been taught in the body of christ number one hospitality never carry a man of god and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are invited no don't do that hospitality hallelujah prepare very well let the man of god eat well if he's fasting ask him don't assume don't say bring only dinner i already know this guy he's always fasting what if he's not fasting that day Number two, prepare to celebrate his grace publicly. Hallelujah. Prepare to celebrate his grace. I'm teaching you how to receive graces. There are places I've gone for once, it would take God instructing me to go there again. When God speaks, then I go particularly just because I'm obeying the voice of God. Otherwise, I will never go there out of personal comfort again. No, no. Number three, let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization. Excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive. Excellence just means the highest level of order. Let there be the highest level of order. And then number four, honor the man. As much as possible, let there be an honorarium honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace just like teachers you can never really reward mentors and men of god and great men make sure you never bring a man of god i remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere they had been disturbing this guy and when he went to preach i'm being sincere with you <laughs> immediately he finished they, you know this kind of this kind of um these wire papers they just squeeze 500 naira, roll, roll it as if it's bribe, and just say, "Me, we thank you for your grace." Ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. Now, imagine that that man of God has a wife. Are you getting my point? And now this man left his wife for three days. This is his job. This is where God blesses him, and he comes back after three days. Right? And she's happy. She welcomes him. And the man said, we came back from the vineyard of the Lord. We have done exploits for the kingdom. Blind eyes were open. You know, sick bodies. And then they just bring this PTA. You know this PTA letter of primary school. Where they, they will leave dash and they put the amount. And say, honey, just to remind you that uh, Junior is going to school day after tomorrow. And the man of God becomes angry. He's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners but his family is dying. Never bring a man of God that you are not your capacity. Don't say I can bring anybody. Let me tell you the mistake. There are many people who try to bring men of God and they overlook these things. And when it happens, it's like it endorses their error. And so they say, look, even so, so, so and so person we have brought him, talk more of you. You don't know the inconvenience that person went through. And he just did it for the sake of the gospel. By the grace of God, if you see us invite anybody in this house, I can tell you, at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that God has given us, we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed. Blessed enough that if we call him tomorrow, he will say, thank you, I'm coming. Everybody say the law of honor.
any anointing that you do not honor you will never receive anything from and let me tell you brothers and sisters the breakthrough or the key to your next level is hidden in an anointing that may not be so far from you from scripture our breakthrough is always closer to us than we can ever imagine the problem is we keep looking far that breakthrough may be your mother in the same house you've gone to every man of god and every prophet and every herbalist but your mother who has that anointing to set you free there are people who again and again they probably have not been healed because they have not honored what god is doing in this house we are going to pray these keys that i've shared with you will give you uncommon success you can see the book that i'm writing them this these are keys that I am applying in my own life. And those who have gone ahead of us, who found this ancient path, told us that this is the way. And we confirm by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that this is it. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We have just five minutes to pray, so I want you to take every prayer point very seriously. Begin to bless God for the opportunity to hear this. Lord we thank you go ahead and praise him I thank you oh God for the privilege of hearing a word that can take me now I see why I am where I am now I see why things have not been happening in my life thank you Lord because I've been given the keys to the next level the Bible says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about outside and inside pray say lord i see that you are no respecter of persons pray have you been ignoring the ministry of mentors men who have experience and grace have you been trivializing vessels Calling them your friends. Calling them your colleagues. Being embarrassed to acknowledge their ability to build and help you. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, from today, I receive grace. To recognize the vessels that you have put over my life. I recognize the grace. I take them as mentors indeed. I take them as instructors indeed. I stop arguing with their instructions. I stop arguing with their instructions. I receive grace to comply. I take their words like the voice of God. Pray. We have just five minutes to pray. So pray. Le pratica balada da vos. Si balada bagalada da da vos soto bala. Grace. Pray for grace never to find yourself talking against a man of God again. Pray and say Lord, I repent from criticizing any great man. A man of God, a businessman a successful leader my boss in the office my superior i receive grace from today i honor all men i honor the king hallelujah prayer point number two i want you to pray and say lord that problem i've been anointed to solve reveal it to me my prosperity depends on it my significance depends on it i'm tired of feeling inferior i'm tired of suffering with complex i'm tired of admiring others show me that problem i was anointed to solve that will make my world listen to me show me show me that value 
have been anointed to add to my generation when you find your assignment you will become prosperous when you find your assignment you will become distinguished when you find your assignment your background is no longer a factor your education is no longer a factor when you find your assignment your weaknesses are swallowed up by the strength of the problems you can solve i don't care what limitations you have in your life right now your assignment is the key to influence your assignment the problems you are solving when god wants to bless you he will give you greater problems to solve the size of your goliath determines the size of your throne hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll close I wanted to talk about enemies i'm so sorry i could not i could not talk about it maybe another time but let me just ship one or two things may your life never be so insignificant that your enemies will ignore you are you hearing what i'm saying may your life never be so insignificant that your enemies will ignore you listen when enemies persecute you it is because they have seen the tendency for you to become successful are you getting my point enemies are as important as friends many of you are angry you are doing everything to win approval repent tonight you need enemies your friends decide your comfort but your enemies decide your reward every listen and enemies are announcing that your current season is over and a new season is about to open up without enemies there is no promotion Battle is the seed for territory. Whenever you pray for breakthrough, God will schedule a Goliath. If there is no Goliath, every time you see trouble or challenges, change your perception. Don't cry. Start rejoicing because that season is wrapping up and another one is opening up. So right now in one minute, maybe we'll add one more prayer point say lord every challenge that has come to my life thank you i see it as an opportunity for my lifting it was a disappointment the relationship did not work but thank you it is for my lifting the promotion did not come but it was for such a time as this thank you for the men who persecuted me thank you for the enemies thank you for the evil reports about me they are announcing me in disguise go ahead and pray enemies are important in the school of success they are as important as friends pray change your mindset about enemies change your mindset about challenges change your mindset about persecution they do not come to destroy you they come to make you strong they come to lift you higher no weeping and just for a night joy comes in the morning convert your obstacles to opportunities hallelujah hallelujah don't waste your time trying to explain yourself to critics that is such a waste of energy are you getting me when it listen when a man is determined to criticize you, anything you say can be misquoted, but silence cannot be misquoted. Are you, you can misquote me when I talk, but when I'm silent, you cannot misquote silence. Are you getting my point now? Last prayer point. Lord, I've been disrespecting the careers who have the grace for my next level tonight. I receive grace to honor them lift your voice and pray some of you after tonight you will need to send text messages to your pastors to your parents to your mentors to your leaders telling them how much of a gift they are to your life 
telling them how much their grace has blessed you swallow your pride swallow your pride there is always a man above you swallow your pride there is always a man above you swallow your pride I honor all men lift your voice and pray I honor all men I honor all men I recognize the graces that God has positioned for my next level they may be my friends but I refuse to trivialize their grace they may be my brothers they may be my sisters they may be my genius they may even be people I got born again but I refuse to be familiar with grace I refuse to be familiar with unction I refuse to be familiar I receive their ministry I receive their anointings I sow into their lives I serve the anointing I serve with diligence I serve my way to glory I saw my way to glory. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, oh, oh. My help has come. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave in the name of Jesus Christ and at the count of three any family whether territorially or by whatever connection is tied to the spirit of the grave I'm declaring at the count of three as you shout Jesus the power of God is setting you free one two three the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave I curse you by the God of heaven the spirit of the grave I curse you by the God of heaven just follow me this night now I'm praying for all those in front they came out because the Lord showed something I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three I speak to these spirits release everything you have taken from these families one, two, go, go, go out of their lives, out of their destinies out of their lives, out of their destinies I command a release I command a release I command a release, release breakthroughs, release open doors. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you or it may happen once in a while this is a strange oppression of darkness and i declare i'm praying right now i'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people that is the root cause of many oppressions in your life at the count of three you will shout that name again that is above every other name and some of you will feel something leaving you immediately i declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions 
at the count of three let there be emancipation one two get ready three i command those spirits go now strangers of the night strangers of the night kebrakatakata rekatakata help that gentleman strangers of the night rekete perekata bring them out strangers of the night i curse you by the god of heaven molesting the saints planting sicknesses in their bodies hello kim madonna a certain family here i'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone something that has to do with a stone i don't know what that means and in what tribe but i'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone i don't know if it's for protection or for whatever but in the name of jesus i'm praying right now by the power of the holy spirit that any fraternity with the elements of Christ let it be broken now in the name of Jesus help them please let it be broken now in the name of Jesus fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus the mysteries behind the strange hardship of people the mysteries behind the oppression of people oppression of families doors doors are opening that's what i'm seeing in the spirit doors doors some of you will feel fire on your hands fire on your hands doors are opening two leaf gates in the spirit fire on your hand you will know by the fire that comes to your hand i'm seeing fire coming on people's hands that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit doors opening you must testify doors opening doors opening doors opening edge long doors edge long doors that have been closed for many years I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet, chains being removed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I saw an angel stand there, chains being taken up from your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, chains being taken from off your feet. Listen, let me explain something to you. This is not just some disorganized jamboree. God is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy. Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now.
there are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life, but there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me, I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuels and the people delay 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 there is an anointing coming now is crushing that spirit just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you in the name of Jesus delay delay God is visiting delay broken by the Spirit of God Please help them so they don't injure themselves. He came to set the captives free. To set the captives free. Hold on. This young lady, lift your hands. This, this, yes, you. Lift your hands. I'm stretching my hands towards you. I don't know what it is that I saw, but I saw something like smoke. The other one, the smaller one with white. Yes. I just saw something like smoke coming out of you. And the Lord is saying this is oppression for many years. That has something to do with your abdominal region. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that oppression go. Let it leave you. Let it go. Let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus there is a woman now i'm going to pray for people generally but i don't know how we'll do this there is a barren woman in overflow three barren woman trusting god for the fruit of the womb please if if you can allow the woman to run and come god is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child overflow three please let her run and come Yabone na kao Sujata ne na kao Sirkin salam Sirkin abjana Yabone na kao Yabone na kao Sujata ne na kao Sirkin salam Maureen, Maureen, I'm hearing a name, Maureen, 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 what is your name, lift your hands, where are you from, shout Jesus, loud as you can, Jesus, let the power of witchcraft, over your life be broken my dear look at me look at me shout jesus. jesus i crush that spirit right now in the name of jesus and the man you see in your dream in the name of jesus may you never see that man again please make sure you they don't why is mama here is she maureen this woman i i'll pray for you that woman come madam is that your daughter? Come, madam. Where are you coming from, ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from Area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I did not pray for you, huh, it's a bike that will kill you. 
from the market in an accident this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead i'm not a prophet of doom mama please don't be afraid in the name of jesus christ hold my hands i extend your life by the power of the holy spirit that the plague of death see let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now i'm praying by the spirit and in the name of jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death i command that it is crushed now in jesus name what is your name my dear maureen come you will look at a beautiful lady like this but in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing a human being but no face no face like this i'm just seeing a blank face like this let me tell you what this means it's a yoke of bad luck that people stand and cannot bless you you have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded the lady on yellow lift your hands there's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck listen i'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before i pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of jesus i'm not praying for her i'm praying for someone now by the spirit of the lord but the lord is saying i should hold her as i pray for the person lord in the name of jesus this yoke of bad luck i'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the holy spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of jesus let it be broken now 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 now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the holy spirit i take away this that i'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We're going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen. Are you married? You are married? Yes, sir. But you don't have a child? Yes, sir. From Overflow 3? Yes, sir. Where's your husband? not here it's not but you're married yes sir. come and stand here and watch the god of wonders i don't know you madam from overflow three you are from overflow three you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb why did you come your name is maureen what do you do madam hold on i'm a business woman you're a business woman where i used to sell at uh, young um random canoe but right now the business is scattered. do you know why i'm asking you no I must pray for you because this thing is not only you there is nobody doing well in your family your entire family this is what I'm seeing is a spirit huh? except you open up something and miss even physical money used to get missing from you you will keep money and count it and found find out that it's not what you kept is that true if I'm lying just say I'm lying where are you from from a new Anambra state. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the state Anambra. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus. That anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you
be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus please help them be free in the name of Jesus and I'm brastate be free in the name of Jesus I'm still seeing the map in my vision be free in the name of Jesus my friend that young man holding his hands shout Jesus from where you are the yoke is broken I cast it out of your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ madam I need to pray for you don't feel bad look at me you insulted a woman some years ago and the woman told you it will not be well with you it was like a joke truly the thing followed you this is what God is showing me now I'm not a prophet of doom I'm going to pray for you I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it you insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it would not be well because what you were saying about her was not what she did hold my hands the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered let me tell you my brothers and my sisters the scourging tongues of men the scourging tongues of men except you know where you stand a cause causeless shall not stand but if there is a cause it will stand though it will stand are we together now i will pray where are your siblings madam hi this woman no oh. you are not here alone where are the rest call them just stand where you call what is their name educate quickly please and victor educate come and and who victor that is and victor son. yes victor is not your brother victor is a small my boy son, yes. where is he let him come Because I'm seeing the boy, you are saying Victor is a little boy. Ah, uh, are you married? Yes. You have a son? Yes. Your son's name too is Victor? Yes, he's the one I'm calling. Is the boy that you are talking yes. about? You said your brother. No, HK is my brother. Then Let Victor the boy come. As young as that boy is too, if I don't pray for him, he will start stealing. Eh? There are two boys, small boys that will be delivered from this spirit. No matter where you keep anything, they must steal it. We are not condemning people. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. God is delivering people. To the pure, all things are pure. Nobody is calling any family a bad family. But this is a place where God is visiting people. Where is the person, please? Come, celebrate him as he comes. You're welcome, sir. I will pray for you. God is going to turn your family around. This is the little boy. My friend, how are you? Come. How old are you? 11 years old. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I will pray for you. How can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things? Do you know? Let me tell you. These small children that steal are not thieves. It's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment, it was not dealt with because most of what they steal they don't need it that's how you know it's a spirit are we together yes that's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy don't assume they will be spiritual by default my friend let me pray for you father thank you for this adorable young man and this guy has a great destiny you see this boy i'm looking at a star rising as i'm laying my hands on him this is what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus christ i pray for you you will be a great man by the power of the holy spirit hold this woman the anointing of the spirit is coming on her in the name of jesus christ sir what do you do a medical sales representative you are a medical sales representative medical sales representative can i pray for you you are a sincere person eh? but this thing they are just forces that want to destroy your family i will pray for you eh? april may june it will look like you held a charm the way god will turn your life around you believe it in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you madam 
come the power of god is coming upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare this thing that i'm seeing tied to your waist i lose it right now by the power of the holy spirit be set free now in the name of jesus christ you are the one trusting god for a child come how long have you been married three years three years no child you too are you married five years four five months. years four months yes. no child no child doctor said after two surgeries they said my husband cannot impregnate me he did surgery twice don't cry jesus is here huh you went through two surgeries where is your husband he's at home, he's at home. don't cry where are you from where are you coming from Greatland. you see th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through sometimes we take some things for granted imagine the advices someone now will recommend and say go to a herbalist go and do this and don't cry my sister two surgeries you went through mm. my head now i'm seeing something being removed from your stomach look at what is happening to her yes she went through two surgeries In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free now. Madam, I set you free now. I'm praying for the rest, but I set you free now. Hold my hands, come. In the name of Jesus. I declare supernatural miracle for you now release this woman now as I'm praying for you I'm praying for your husband wherever he is according to the time of life may you return with your miracle children it's over in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God my dear let me why is this woman here you are married to madam no child how long four years and um, five months four years five months where are you coming from Jigawa state from Jigawa state please come oh dear God is dealing with these issues because he has declared that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness is fruitfulness from any dimension any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying I may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in I think is the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone Sarah. Huh? Sarah. oh dear put your hand on your stomach is she a christian she's, she's a christian okay it doesn't matter whether you are a muslim or christian the Lord, everybody the Lord healed in the Old Testament. He healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. But I'm seeing something come out of you. And you are coughing. Coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? blessing where's your husband he's not here he's not here 
father in the name of jesus i don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now i decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we're not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from Huh? Nasrawa State. Nasrawa State. Are you alone? No, I'm You came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there be freedom now. i'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he husband sir please come there's Daddy something the lord wants to do in your family don't worry he's, he's here he's coming thank you sir thank you for coming god bless you i want to pray for you you came from kano too you came from kano too sir i'm going to pray for you think come out of you opportunity to hand their lives opportunity to hand their lives over you just act like this just to show honor and respect people i will pray for you there is a name that is above every other name and in the name of Jesus I lay my hands upon your womb and I declare the embargo of barrenness five years barrenness let it be broken right now look at this let it be broken right now I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach this is what I'm seeing and then I'm seeing you coughing you are now beginning to cough this is what I'm seeing I don't know what it is that I'm seeing but I'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing coughing something out in the name of Jesus Christ let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing, blessing. where's your husband he's not here he's not here yes. father in the name of Jesus I don't care what the medical report is we agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now I decree and declare according to the time of life 
return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we're not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasrawa state nasrawa state are you alone no I'm you came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there be freedom now. i'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he husband sir please come there's Daddy something the lord wants to do in your family don't worry he's, he's here he's coming thank you sir thank you for coming god bless you i want to pray for you you came from kano too you came from kano too sir i'm going to pray for you number one god is going to give you the fruit of the womb number two god is restoring your finances you hear what i'm saying Amen. god is restoring your finances Amen. this is a serious issue as you are here coming now the financial trouble you are into is only god that can bring you out Amen. is that true god is going to help you madam put your hand on your stomach in the name of jesus christ why are they here six graduates no job in the name of jesus christ father by your mercy and by your grace let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman just keep her down in the name of jesus i declare by the power of the holy spirit everything that is wrong be corrected now in the name of jesus sir please can you hold my hands in the name of jesus i speak over your finances there is a grace that can restore and i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ madam let me talk to you and then we'll pray for the sick you are the both of you where are you coming from you are here in zaria yes and yeah yes i know your face six graduates no job yes sir including you yes sir come no but there are six Nigeria people now. yes but there's no job for yes, them sir. can we agree that god will give them a job yes sir and you too yes. let's pray come hold my hands father in the name of jesus christ 
there is an anointing that is coming upon you eh? and is for the sake of your family in the name that is above all names i release this grace upon you and i pray let the embargo of joblessness be broken now even on both of you i use you as a point of contact to pray now something is leaving this lady's hand you something is leaving your hand i cost that yoke now in the name of jesus your hand is a symbol of your productivity and i declare in the name of jesus let there be liberty liberty for all of you liberty i open the doors of jobs in jesus name i pray why is he here you are a graduate six from where please from abuja abuja yes you are a school of ministry student madam let me talk to you where are you coming from natural state are you married bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit the hand of God is coming upon someone the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous please bring the person let's save time father i establish this victory over this lady's life the oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever broken now and broken forever ah, we don't have time our time is gone but the lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state hello kim matona hello hello kim matona under this grace whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity i stand by the hand of god whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help me. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. 
the way this thing works is that men rise the moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing they must die this is the spirit i'm seeing please listen i'm not i'm just using them and i'm ministering the way god is showing me these are not the only families with this thing but the lord is saying i should deal with it now provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle you no death will touch you but the moment you touch that bar you are going down and the lord wants to destroy it because god is using both of you to start a new program in the family i will follow the lion i will follow the lamb I will follow the lion. I will follow the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of our family. As small as you are seeing this this little girl because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family and as small as she is the devil wants to kill her in the name of jesus christ i declare i use this my dear daughter as a point of contact that everything that is not the planting of god i scatter it now in the name of jesus may god use this our precious daughter and truly may she be the deliverer of our family in the name of jesus a lady is going to start running because i'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family and that spirit is going to start driving her to run away so i'm telling you in advance you are going to see the person stand up to start running away it's, it's not even this lady i'm talking about this is somebody in the crowd you will not even you will not be in control of yourself it's a spirit because i'm about to rebuke it right now mm. father i thank you for the bonire family and by extension the various families the altar that sits upon this family even the lawful captives came around zakata shall be delivered even the lawful captives i break that yoke now i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood that ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken i open up the door of increase rise to the senate of your profession i forbid the spirit of death once and for all in a moment in a twinkling of an eye an issue that is age long let me tell you this a mighty deliverance has happened to this family this thing i'm telling you fought their grandparents fought their parents and if not delivered now will still fight them If there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family, you rise to a position and crash down. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar, scatter that altar forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. It took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble. Now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful. And that every embargo of witchcraft, once and for all, is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Where did you say you are from? Nasarawa just, State. just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa State. Yes, Where are you from? Ebony State. Ebony State. Ebony State. Yes. 
I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where is your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up, stand up. Please stand up, stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, yeah. sir. What do you do? I am lecturer in the university. You are a lecturer? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man. You, but there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, all, but you are a brilliant man. It Thank even you, took grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, sir. It's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you were too exceptional. Yes, sir. You are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about. That you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department Sorry, sir. Political science, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. You will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. What do you do, my dear? I'm not doing anything. You are not doing anything? No, sir. Ah, I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Ah, that trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you. And I release your destiny. Amen. Both for you and your wife. Amen. I decree and declare. Scale new heights in your profession. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. There is a friend in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to be careful. There is a friend in your life. Be careful. I won't say more than that. Be careful. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Bokos. Huh? Bokos. From Joss. Not state of origin, where you came from, that you left it and came. Huh? I want to pray for you. What do you do? I, I, I'm a secretary. You are what? I'm a secretary. You are a secretary? Yes, sir. Come, let me pray for you. I, One of these days, we'll just trust God and do a night vigil, honestly, so that we can deal with this issue seriously. You may think that time is being wasted until you see what God is turning around in your life. All these people came from Joss? Madam, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will not have what they call that pregnancy that they'll have to do. Um, no, bridge is bridge or something like that. This is what I'm saying. All done. Let me pray for you. Come. You are sick. It looks like pregnancy. Like it's breached. This is what I'm saying. The pregnancy that looks like it's... That will open you up and carry something out. Where are you coming from? Joss. What did they say is wrong with you? Um, multiple fibrosis. No. A man... Don't feel embarrassed. Can I talk to you? A man used to come in a dream. Huh? Yes, and sleep with you yes, is that true yes, that's what brought this pregnancy i'm a man of god don't be af afraid you you heard the story i told you now yes, madam if i'm lying look at me before the whole world and say i'm a liar that you go to bed 
and a man comes and all of a sudden this started coming of course medically you would think that okay you check it there is nothing there yet the pregnancy will not go how long has this thing been three years three years don't cry don't cry who did you come with may this place remain a place of solutions was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically and had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can i pray for you you believe in jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy a, does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life put your hand there father in the name of jesus christ look at this look at what is happening to the woman in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by god let it be uprooted in this body is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father it must be uprooted i uproot this right now in the name of jesus christ i uproot this right now in the name of jesus by a strange mystery may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body in the name of jesus christ just keep her down there madam let me pray for you what do you want the lord to do for you I'm believing him for a life partner. Life partner. Do you believe God can give you a life partner? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. You are born again. Father, the Bible says male and female, he created them. She's not embarrassed. She's standing sincerely and telling you that I came so that God will bless me with a life partner. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life Amen. in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow I'll be in just Saturday, Sunday. I'm ministering in a conference. I'm excited. I'll be in House on the Rock at Rayfield, Saturday and Sunday. I'm in just. But let me pray for you, all of you who came all the way. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. I drive the boy. That the devil wants to bring to your life say amen amen you you may not understand what i'm saying but let me repeat myself i drive i didn't say god drove him in the name of jesus christ as one who loves you well eh? i drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life amen in the name of jesus i'm amen. not looking down it is god's will that all men be saved but then I'm telling you that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that would destroy your destiny, let it be far from you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. For all of you, I may not know why you came, but let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name, just believe what I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. God bless you. Please go back to your seat, my God. Can we still pray for the sick? How many of you are trusting God for healing? Let me see your hands out there. 
okay this is what is going to happen it's okay I'm, I'm going to pray for you 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 came you brought them okay i'm going to pray for you now you just relax now please because of time those under the anointing just leave them if there's no usher hold on a lady usher place your hand on that girl any lady usher release her now out in the name of jesus let it come to an end now and forever release her destiny release her family in the name of jesus christ let there be restoration let there be testimonies please this is how we are going to do it because our time is already gone we are going to do three things at the same time please listen number one you are going to be submitting your prayer requests number two those who are trusting god for healing in the various overflows please aside from those that i prayed for for barrenness if your reason of coming here is barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i want you to come to overflow one i want to pray for you myself aside from that please you are trusting god for a healing miracle i want you to move to your various overflows so those at overflow one move to the front of your projector stand overflow two the same thing overflow three the same thing those by the roadside the roadside down to second equa join overflow two you can join overflow two please ushers protocol pr department coordinate yourself to help them please so that the people know what they are doing praise the lord those in here you can come you can come the lord bless you now there are going to be men and women of god scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing make sure you are standing for healing please make sure you are standing for healing no 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 those for fruit of the womb come in please the main auditorium i want to lay hands on you by myself it doesn't matter what overflow you are if it is fruit of the womb please come the main auditorium i want to pray for you now please listen just a touch is enough you don't have to start explaining and telling the men of god this is a problem sometimes god can give them words if they don't don't worry just a touch and you will go back i want you to believe this that's why you came are we together while that is happening if you have your prayer request here you can just wave it and pass it let there be an usher okay um peace is here you can pass it let there be an usher or somebody please um the various departments coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this let's make it fast those online um you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests and we're going to pray on it right now please quickly quickly A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. A Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one. Um, Pastor Alpha and Benga will go to overflow three. Overflow three. Pastor Femi and Kenny and ima go to overflow two also extend to those by the roadside extend to those by the roadside did you get let me pray for you pastor lawrence come i will pray for you and then you will join those at overflow three in the name of jesus christ grace for you by the power of the holy spirit let the anointing, let the grace of the Spirit come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, worship team, you give us songs of the Spirit while we are ministering. And as soon as hands are laid on you, you can go back rejoicing. Those who are seated, don't be careless, be praying in the Spirit. Because God is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests. If you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start moving to heal right here those in front here okay so i can start praying now in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus christ be healed praise the lord please everyone stand say after me in the name of jesus whether you are inside or outside say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now lift up your voice and begin to pray please begin to pray of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here that by the grace of God this will be the last time you have to visit this issue please pray please pray our time is gone but let's make use of the time stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every request that I've written here by the God of heaven let this be the last time may the Lord arise and solve impossible situations arise in the name of Jesus are you praying father that these Egyptians that I see today I see them no more forever the requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms we declare intervention we declare breakthrough we declare increase hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ we declare and we agree as a family of faith 
that this request will turn into testimonies in your life we declare that this request turn into supernatural testimonies the same way I am standing upon them I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ I know that they are still praying for a few people but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone He says, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I decree and declare, every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise, I declare that you are exempted from it now. Every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I severe you from them right now in Jesus' name. I speak favor over your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus, walk in favor. 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 Therefore, God has exalted him and given him a name. That is above every other name. It says that at the mention of that name, every knee must bow. I declare, whatever must bow in your life from tonight, let it bow right now. Let me pray for you finally. And especially for those of us who are not within this city. If you traveled far and came, I'm praying for you now. In the name that is above all names, to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far, that includes those from our social media platforms, I decree and declare, whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here, return with the answers now. Return with the answers now. You will not need to tell people you came here. There will be the radiance and the glory of the Spirit upon your life. I declare that every door that has refused to open, even as the Lord kept revealing here, I enforce it and we call that door open now. The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left that must be shown in your life, you are blessed here but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here but not yet blessed here. I declare completion for you now. May April bring you completion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye